One foggy morning, something strange happened that I rarely speak of, even among other rangers. It started like any other early shift. I was patrolling a remote part of the forest, far from the usual trails, where the trees stood close together, their branches tangling above me to create a thick canopy. The ground was blanketed in mist, giving the world a muffled, otherworldly feel. It was quiet. Too quiet. As I moved deeper, I noticed something unusual. A circle of trees, stripped of bark as if something had torn it off in jagged strokes. The ground was littered with strange markings, deep and wide, like claw marks, but far larger than anything I'd seen before. The air felt thick, almost electric. The animals were silent. Not a single bird or rustle of a squirrel, just an eerie stillness that gnawed at me. I crouched to inspect the ground more closely and found a footprint. But it wasn't like any footprint I knew. It was too large to be a wolf. The track had four toes, each with a long, sharp indentation at the end, as if claws had pressed deep into the earth. I'd heard stories from old-timers and local tribes of a creature they called the Whisperer, a shadowy figure that supposedly lived deep in the woods, moving in and out of sight, watching but never seen. I always thought it was just campfire talk, something to keep campers spooked. And then I heard it. A low rumble that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once. It wasn't a growl exactly more like the deep, resonant hum of something massive breathing. I froze, heart pounding, eyes scanning the shadows. Just beyond my vision, I caught the briefest glimpse of movement, an enormous hulking figure, partially hidden by trees, its outline blurred in the mist. It was massive, almost twice my height, and moved with a slow, deliberate grace that sent chills through me. I couldn't make out details, only the vague shape of broad shoulders and an elongated neck, almost as if it were hunched over. The creature seemed to notice me then. I felt its gaze, piercing and intelligent, as though it were sizing me up. Every instinct screamed at me to move, but I was rooted to the spot, unable to tear my eyes away. The air smelled earthy, like damp soil mixed with something metallic. My skin prickled with an overwhelming sense of being watched, studied by something that didn't belong in the world I knew. And suddenly, the figure vanished, melting back into the fog as if it were never there. The birds returned, chirping hesitantly, as though they too were uncertain about what had just passed. The heavy energy lifted, leaving me alone once more with only the strange footprints in the dirt as proof that anything had been there at all. I never reported it. I knew no one would believe me, and even if they did, I didn't want anyone coming out here with traps or cameras, disturbing the delicate balance of this place. I've since come across other signs, an odd howl in the distance, trees clawed in strange patterns, footprints that shouldn't exist. It's become something I carry with me, a secret shared only with the forest. Over time, I started to sense when it was near. Every so often, when I was out in the deeper parts of the park, I'd feel that weight, that feeling of being watched from just beyond the trees. Sometimes I'd find another footprint or hear the low hum that seemed to vibrate through the forest floor. It became a presence, a part of the landscape, something ancient and mysterious that felt as much a guardian of the forest as I was. One day, on a late autumn evening, I saw it again. The mist hung low, thick like smoke, and the sun was a dim orange glow through the trees. I was crossing a rocky clearing when I spotted it, on the edge of the tree line, watching. It stayed just beyond clear sight, its shadow flickering in and out of the mist, but I knew it was there. I felt a strange sense of understanding then, like we were both simply doing our part to protect this land. For the first time, I felt no fear, only respect, and a deep, quiet awe. Since that day, I've left it be, and it's left me be. Each of us knows our place in this strange, quiet world. 
I don't mention it to the visitors, the hikers who look to me for stories and directions. They wouldn't understand, and I think somehow the whisperer prefers it that way. Every so often, especially on misty mornings, I catch a glimpse, a shadow, a footprint. I've come to accept it, to let it be. Whatever the whisperer is, I know it's out there, watching, guarding this place. And as long as it does, I know I am not the only one looking over these woods. I used to be a wildlife photographer, spending days, or even weeks, camped out in the Smoky Mountains to capture the perfect shot. The park spans over 500,000 acres of raw wilderness, split almost equally between North Carolina and Tennessee. With its dense trees and misty mountains, it's beautiful, but also eerie. I had experienced strange things out there before, but nothing like what happened that night. One evening, as I was reviewing my photos in a small camp near Klingman's Dome, the park's highest point, I received a message from a park maintenance worker. He sounded rattled, saying he'd seen something strange lurking around one of the parking lots. He didn't want to be alone, so I packed up my gear and met him to check things out. By the time I arrived, it was pitch dark, and the only sound was the wind in the trees. He described seeing a creature about 50 yards off, moving quickly through the bushes. He said it had shaggy hair all over, resembling some sort of ape. He'd tried to get a closer look with his flashlight, but the underbrush was too thick. As he waited, he heard twigs snapping and leaves crunching, as if something large was getting closer. When he finally caught a glimpse, the creature stood on two legs, towering over the bushes, then dashed off into another thicket. Curiosity got the best of me. Together, we ventured deeper into the woods, our footsteps cautious. We crept through the underbrush, pausing every few minutes to listen for sounds. About 15 minutes later, we both heard it, a series of heavy footsteps moving toward us. This time they were louder, as if something much bigger than us was approaching. We froze as we listened, hoping it might just be an overactive imagination playing tricks. Suddenly, there was a massive ground-shaking sound, a thud, then another, and then the creature was charging right at us. I raised my camera, hoping the flash might startle it, while the worker aimed his flashlight into the darkness. The light hit something big, but before we could make it out, the footsteps stopped. Silence fell around us, broken only by our own racing hearts. We stood there, too scared to move, waiting to see if it would come back. After a few tense moments, I cautiously shined my camera's flash in the direction where the sounds had stopped. There, not far away, stood a massive black figure. Its head was oddly pointed, with no neck in sight. And when it opened its mouth, we saw long, sharp teeth that glistened in the flashlight's beam. For a moment, the creature and I locked eyes. Then, it let out a deafening growl that echoed through the trees. The worker couldn't take it, and bolted down the trail, but I stood rooted to the spot, paralyzed with fear. Before I knew it, the creature lunged forward, its massive hand grabbing my leg and pulling me to the ground. I thrashed and kicked, trying to free myself, my camera flinging wildly as I fought back. I shouted for help, desperate to get away. Finally, the creature released its grip, giving me just enough time to scramble to my feet and dash back toward the parking lot. When I reached the lot, the worker was already in the vehicle, waiting. We sped down to the ranger station and told them what had happened. That night, a group of rangers went back up to search for tracks or signs of what we'd seen. But when they returned, they reported finding nothing, not a footprint, not even a broken branch. It was like the creature had vanished into thin air, leaving no trace behind. The next day, we returned to the site in daylight, hoping the morning light might reveal something we'd missed. We did find a few broken branches here and there, but they could have been from anything. Whatever we'd encountered the night before seemed to be gone, 
leaving nothing but an unsettling memory. Weeks went by, and I continued my work in the park, but I heard from other hikers and campers who'd felt a strange presence near Klingman's Dome, though no one else had actually seen it. Months later, a hiker reported seeing a large figure moving through the trees in that same area. She described it much like we had, and yet, once again, there was no evidence left behind. I became fascinated with local folklore, learning about the stories of mysterious creatures told by the Cherokee and early settlers. They spoke of beings that could vanish without a trace and only appear to those who dared to wander too deep into the mountains. Eventually, I left the Smokies, moving on to other places to photograph. But every now and then, I find myself drawn back to that night. I wonder if what I saw was real or some strange trick of the mind. Even now, as I look back, I can still feel the creature's grip on my leg, and that low, earth-rumbling growl lingers in my memory. Whenever I talk to friends heading to the Smokies, I always tell them to stay alert, especially near Klingman's Dome. The day I came face to face with the Ozark Howler started as a calm, sunny hike. The trails of the Ozarks, with their winding paths and towering trees, had always called to me. And today, I finally answered. I wanted to lose myself in nature, but as the day wore on, I realized I'd done more than that. I was well and truly lost. I tried to retrace my steps, but every turn looked the same. I'd packed light, and the light was fading fast. The thought of spending a night alone in the woods made me uneasy, but I told myself it was no big deal. These are just trees, I murmured to myself. Trees, rocks, and birds. Nothing to be afraid of. But then I heard something. It started as a low, distant sound, almost like wind passing through a hollow log. But as I stood still and listened, the noise grew louder and stranger. It wasn't the sound of any animal I'd ever heard before. It was as if a wolf, an elk, and something else, something much darker, were all crying out together. The sound was moving closer. I told myself to get moving, to keep walking until I found the trail again, but my legs wouldn't listen. Fear froze me in place. As I listened, the cry came again, louder and closer. I could make out bits of a laugh, the kind that raised every hair on my arms. It wasn't a friendly laugh. It was like something out of a nightmare. I tried to shake off the fear. It's just a fox, I whispered, trying to comfort myself. Maybe an owl. But in the pit of my stomach, I knew that whatever was making that sound was neither fox nor owl. I remembered stories I'd heard from locals about a creature called the Ozark Howler. They said it was bear-sized, with shaggy black fur and a thick, powerful body. Some called it the Devil Cat or Nightshade Bear. They said it had bright red eyes that glowed like embers in the dark and sharp curved horns sticking out from its head. But those were just stories, right? I heard something crashing through the brush behind me. My legs found the strength they'd lost, and I bolted, darting between trees, not caring where I ended up as long as it was far away from that horrible noise. My lungs burned and branches scratched my arms, but I didn't stop. Then I saw them, two glowing red eyes peering at me through the trees. They were set low, just above the ground, and burned like coals in the darkness. They stared at me, unblinking, watching. My heart hammered as I realized just how big this creature was. It wasn't a bear or a big cat. It was something else entirely. Slowly, it emerged from the shadows. The creature was huge, at least the size of a bear, with thick, matted black fur hanging off its body in clumps. Its legs were thick and powerful, and each step it took shook the ground beneath my feet. But the most frightening part was its face. Those red eyes burned above a long snout filled with sharp teeth and two twisted horns jutted out from its head. I tried to back away, 
but my foot caught on a root, and I fell, landing hard on the forest floor. Pain shot through my ankle, but I didn't dare take my eyes off the creature. The Ozark Howler's mouth opened, and it let out a scream that echoed through the forest. It was a sound that was both animal and not, a terrible mix of a wolf's howl, an elk's bugle, and something that could only be described as a hyena's laugh. It was the sound of nightmares. The Howler took another step toward me, its red eyes fixed on mine. I wanted to scream, but no sound came out. I thought about my family, my friends, and all the things I hadn't done. Was this really how it would end? But just as the creature moved even closer, something else caught its attention. It stopped, tilting its head, as if listening to something I couldn't hear. And then, without a sound, it turned and disappeared back into the shadows, its eyes fading until there was only darkness. I lay there for a moment, too stunned to move, half convinced I'd imagined the whole thing. But the deep gouges in the earth where its claws had scraped told me otherwise. When I finally found the strength to get up, I hobbled back through the forest, my injured ankle throbbing with every step. I didn't know where I was going, but I didn't care. I just needed to get away. Hours later, just as the first light of dawn crept over the trees, I stumbled out onto a familiar trail. I had never been so relieved in my life. I took one last look back at the forest behind me, half expecting to see those red eyes staring back. But the trees were still, the forest silent. Even now, I don't know what I saw out there. Some people say it was just a bear, others that I must have imagined it. But I know what I saw. Somewhere out there in the depths of the Ozarks, the Ozark Howler is watching, waiting. And if you're ever out there alone and hear that terrible howl, take my advice. Don't look back. It was supposed to be a regular night at an old, cheap motel off the highway the kind with a single flickering neon sign and the smell of stale cigarettes in the air. I'd been traveling alone for days, tired and restless, looking forward to just closing my eyes. But the moment I stepped into my room, something felt wrong. It wasn't the creaking floorboards or the musty scent in the air, though those didn't help. It was something heavier, pressing against my chest, making it hard to breathe. The room looked ordinary enough. A single bed, a small wooden nightstand, a window with thick curtains, and a dim lamp casting strange shadows on the wall. The walls were painted a faded yellow, like they hadn't been touched in decades. I dropped my bag on the floor and sank onto the bed, exhausted but uneasy unable to shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I brushed off the feeling, thinking it was just nerves. But as I lay in bed staring up at the cracked ceiling, a chill spread through me. I felt the temperature drop sharply, the kind of cold that sinks into your bones, making you shiver from the inside out. I pulled the thin blanket tighter, but it didn't help. My eyes drifted to the corner of the room, and that's when I saw him his form nearly reaching the ceiling. His body was entirely black, a solid darkness that seemed to absorb the faint light in the room. A wide-brimmed hat sat on his head, casting an even deeper shadow over his face. He wore a long coat that trailed down, blending into the darkness around him, making it hard to tell where he ended and the shadows began. I wanted to move, to scream, to do anything, but I was frozen. My body wouldn't respond. My limbs felt like lead. I couldn't even look away. It was as if he had some invisible hold over me, forcing me to stare into the void where his face should have been. I couldn't make out any details. No nose, no mouth, just two eyes, dark as coal, but somehow glowing with an unnatural light. The air grew heavier, pressing down on my chest, making it harder and harder to breathe. I felt like I was drowning, trapped beneath an invisible weight. 
His presence was suffocating, filling every corner of the room, pushing out all warmth and light. I was completely at his mercy. I closed my eyes, hoping he would disappear, but when I opened them, he was closer. He hadn't moved, at least not in a way I could see, but he was closer, his tall figure now looming over the bed. I could feel his gaze piercing through me, cutting into my soul like a blade. His eyes, or what seemed to be his eyes, glowed with an intensity that was both terrifying and hypnotic. They were the only real thing about him, the only part of him that didn't blend into the shadows. I tried to convince myself it was a dream, just a bad nightmare that would fade if I could just wake up. But this felt too real. The cold seeping into my skin, the weight pressing down on my chest, the silence so thick it felt alive. I knew I was awake, and I knew he was real. Minutes passed, or maybe it was hours. I couldn't tell. Time seemed to have stopped, caught in some strange loop where nothing existed but me and him. And then slowly, he began to fade. The solid black of his form seemed to dissolve, breaking apart into wisps of shadow that drifted back into the darkness. His eyes were the last to go, lingering in the air for a moment before they too disappeared, leaving me alone in the cold, silent room. When I finally found the strength to move, I stumbled to the light switch and flicked it on, flooding the room with harsh yellow light. The shadows retreated, banished by the brightness, and the weight on my chest lifted. I could breathe again, though each breath was shaky and shallow. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I stayed awake, sitting on the bed with the lights on, jumping at every creak and groan of the old building. My eyes kept darting to the corner where he had first appeared, half expecting to see him standing there again, watching me with those dark, piercing eyes. By morning, the room looked normal again, warm and almost welcoming in the daylight. And I couldn't help but wonder how many other travelers had stayed in that motel, lying awake in the dark, too scared to close their eyes, haunted by the same tall figure with the wide-brimmed hat and the eyes that seemed to see straight into their souls. I was lying in bed one quiet night when my phone buzzed. It was a notification from the security camera by my front door. This was strange. Nothing ever happened around here at night. I picked up my phone and clicked on the video, expecting to see a raccoon or maybe a stray cat, but what I saw left me frozen. On the screen, I could see something hovering at the edge of the yard. It wasn't shaped like a person or an animal. It was a strange form, flickering, hard to make out. But there was light, lights that didn't look like anything I had ever seen. They pulsed in soft colors that seemed to move in patterns, not like any flashlight or car headlight. The lights were deep blues and greens, almost like the colors of the ocean, but in the middle of the night, far from any water. They glowed in a strange rhythm, like they were trying to send a message. The camera struggled to focus, as if it didn't quite know what it was looking at. I could barely make out a shape in the darkness, something not exactly solid, but somehow present. It drifted slowly, moving without footsteps, without sound. The lights faded in and out, leaving strange shadows that danced on the screen. It was there, then it wasn't, like it was slipping in and out of view. I watched, heart pounding, as it hovered for a few moments more, drifting closer, then moving away as if it had found what it was looking for, or maybe decided it hadn't. Then, just like that, the lights began to fade. The colors sank into the darkness, and within seconds, they were gone, leaving only the quiet, empty yard behind. I replayed the footage several times, trying to make sense of what I had seen. But no matter how many times I watched, it only became stranger. There was no explanation, just the image of those lights that flickered like something alive, something not from this world.